Six months had passed since my grandfather, the man who raised me, passed away. Today, the lawyer would be arriving to read his will. Butterflies fluttered in my stomach as I stood in my childhood home, a mirror image of the one across the street where my older sister Susan lived. At 25, I was the responsible one, the one who got a stable job and moved into a nearby apartment to keep a watchful eye on Grandpa after Grandma's passing. Susan, four years older, was the opposite. A whirlwind of dyed hair, questionable friends, and a perpetually empty bank account. She lived life on her own terms. Daydreaming again? Susan's voice, laced with a hint of disdain, snapped me back to reality. At least make some tea for the lawyer. Her perfume, strong and overpowering, reached me even in the kitchen. Right, I mumbled, putting on the kettle. Susan had always been trouble, a teenager who reveled in rebellion, leaving me to face the consequences. Even now, with a string of dead-end jobs, she remained unchanged. I knew she'd been hitting Grandpa up for loans whenever I wasn't around. The lawyer arrived, his kind eyes reflecting the same warmth Grandpa possessed. After the formalities of incense and tea, he produced the will. My heart hammered in my chest as he began to read. To my eldest daughter Susan, his voice boomed, I bequeath the sum of $20 million in cash. Susan's face broke into a wide, exaggerated grin. $20 million? Wow, Grandpa, you really loved me the most, she exclaimed. Before she could gloat further, the lawyer continued. To my youngest granddaughter, Karen, I leave the house and the land it sits upon. Susan's smile faltered. Just the house? An old shack in the middle of nowhere? This is ridiculous. It's not just the house, Susan, I interjected, a newfound strength filling my voice. There's the land, too, she snorted. Land in this backwater? What a joke. The lawyer cleared his throat. The location of the property is quite valuable, Miss Susan. Susan's eyes narrowed. Well, I would have preferred cash, she grumbled. But I guess Grandpa always had a soft spot for you, Karen. Ignoring her jab, I looked around the familiar living room. A sense of peace washed over me. Maybe money wasn't everything. Perhaps Grandpa understood me better than anyone. He knew I'd cherish and protect this house, a testament to the love story of our grandparents and their life together. A house and land? That's pretty awesome, isn't it? The lawyer's question hung in the air. A slow smile crept across my face. Yes, I said, my voice filled with conviction. It absolutely is. A bitter emptiness gnawed at me as Brian chuckled at my story. Wow, beautiful and rich now. That's the ultimate combo, he exclaimed. I forced a smile, but my voice sounded hollow as I replied, Not really. My sister got the $20 million. His insensitive remark stung. Did he only see me as an accessory, a pretty face with a hefty bank account to add some sparkle to his life? I shot him a sidelong glance, hoping my silent disapproval would pierce his naive. Brian, my boyfriend for the past few years, had never proposed, but I'd naively entertained the idea of marriage. Maybe that's why I'd spilled the details of my inheritance, a foolish attempt to solidify my place in his future plans. Days later, I found myself cleaning the inherited house, a charming but modest dwelling nestled near my workplace. As the dust motes danced in the sunlight, an idea sparked. Rent-free living? Peaceful mornings with a purring cat by my side? It wasn't a bad picture. Maybe Brian and I... Someday, I whispered, a blush creeping up my neck. The thought brought a smile, quickly followed by a shake of my head. Stop being ridiculous, Karen. Focus on the present. I was deep in thought when my phone rang, shattering the tranquil silence. My sister's name flashed on the screen. Sis, what's up? I answered, bracing myself for her usual chaotic energy. Hey, Karen. Having fun playing hermit in that dusty old house? Her voice, thick with slurred words, confirmed my suspicion. She was intoxicated. Sis, it's still afternoon, I sighed, exasperation coloring my voice. A loud, exaggerated sigh followed. Oh, be such a party pooper. I'm at this amazing luxury hotel. Her voice trailed off into giggles. Really? Sounds fun, I muttered, eager to end the conversation. Hmm, you have no idea, she cackled. Guess who I'm with? No clue. I lied, my stomach clenching with a premonition. Brian, she shrieked, 
then dropped a bomb. We're having a blast. The world seemed to tilt on its axis. Brian's voice replaced hers, a sickeningly smooth, Surprise, Tom, filling the phone. My mind reeled, conjuring horrifying images. Denial battled a rising tide of anger. Karen, I'm so sorry, Brian mumbled, his apology devoid of sincerity. Just a little mistake. The phone slipped from my numb fingers, clattering onto the floor. Mistake? I choked, the word a strangled whisper. Come on, beautiful, Brian continued, oblivious to my devastation. Isn't twenty million dollars an offer you can't refuse? His words, dripping with opportunism, ripped away the last shred of hope. The man I'd thought I loved was a shallow, money-hungry parasite. A cold fury replaced the emptiness within me. You know what? I began a dangerous edge creeping into my voice. You just wait and see. You'll regret the day you ever crossed me. The raw anger bubbling inside me finally boiled over. I don't need a man like you, I spat into the phone, the sound of my sister's cackle twisting further in my ears. A beat of silence followed, then my sister's triumphant voice. Well, that's how it is, Karen. From now on, consider us strangers. I wouldn't want you crawling back for handouts when you're broke. With that final jab, the call ended. Tears, long held back, streamed down my face. Five years. Five years of bitter silence of rebuilding my life from the ashes of betrayal. Today, my cozy living room was filled with the gentle hum of my laptop and the rhythmic purring of Luna, my loyal feline companion. It was my day off, but a few work documents sat stubbornly on the coffee table, a reminder of the responsibilities I'd shouldered myself. Sorry, Luna, I murmured, gently nudging the sleeping cat off my lap. The phone's shrill ring startled me. An unfamiliar number flashed on the screen. Work, perhaps? Taking a deep breath, I answered. Hello? Karen, long time no see. The voice, instantly recognizable, sent a jolt through me. My blood ran cold. Susan? I breathed, disbelief lacing my voice. A smug chuckle answered me. Who else, little sis? It's me, your big sister. Come on, didn't you recognize my voice after all this time? Five years. Susan, my deceitful sister, hadn't changed one bit. Still the same, I see. A ghost of a smirk played on my lips. By the way, I came by the old house the other day. What a sight. A fancy hotel standing where it used to be. Did you strike gold? My voice was a smooth mask, hiding the churning emotions within. That's none of your business, I said curtly. Oh, come on now, don't be a spoil sport. A grand hotel, wouldn't you say? Must have made a fortune. Her voice dripped with a mixture of envy and desperation. I was about to end the call when a torrent of words spilled from her, revealing a stark reality. In a span of two years, she'd squandered the entire inheritance. Debt, a mountain of it, weighed her down. Even Brian, who clung to her side, was drowning in financial woes. Honestly, at this point, it didn't matter. It didn't evoke a flicker of sympathy or even satisfaction. So that's why you're calling, I stated, my voice flat. To borrow money? A desperate plea followed, filled with empty promises and thinly veiled threats. Yet as she rambled, a memory surfaced. It was of Grandpa, a man who taught me love and resilience. I've always wondered why Grandpa left things the way he did, I began, interrupting Susan's rant. But on the day you stole Brian and slammed the door on our relationship, I understood. My voice, usually steady, wavered with controlled emotion. Back then, heartbroken and lost, I sank into despair. Such a fool, I muttered, tears blurring my vision. My gaze fell on a childhood painting hanging on the wall, a gift to Grandpa. Tears welled up again as I recalled the framed painting with his loving inscription. Rising, I walked towards it, a bittersweet feeling washing over me. Reaching out, I touched the frame, a hidden compartment yielding a small folded paper. It was a note from Grandpa, addressed specifically to me. My heart pounded as I unfolded it. It was dated shortly before he passed. Tears streamed down my face as I read his words, a testament to his love and faith in me. He explained his decision, how despite leaving her a larger sum, it wasn't a reflection of his love. The note concluded with words that warmed my heart and soothed the ache after all these years. A quiet sob escaped my lips. Susan's words, fueled by envy, had blinded me to the truth. Now, 
With Grandpa's message in hand, I truly understood. My grandfather chuckled as I recounted Susan's latest attempt to wheedle money out of me. She wouldn't be satisfied with a million dollars, let alone a fair division, he said, shaking his head. Even as a child, she was terribly greedy. Exactly, Grandpa, I agreed, a touch of bitterness in my voice. She even snagged Brian away from me. My grandfather squeezed my hand. That's why I arranged things the way I did, he confided. While Susan gets a hefty sum up front, it's like a shiny bauble. It'll keep her distracted from the real treasure. Intrigued, I leaned in. What treasure, Grandpa? He winked. The land the house sits on. Its value in our area is skyrocketing due to development. Not as high as Susan's $20 million now, but give it a few years. My eyes widened as understanding dawned. He wasn't favoring Susan. He was giving me the key to financial security. You can live in the house if you like, he continued, or sell it when the land value climbs. Whatever makes you happy. His words warmed me from the inside out. Finally, I truly understood his love and foresight. Years passed. Susan, predictably, squandered her inheritance on a lavish lifestyle. I, however, bided my time. The old house held too many memories, so I opted to sell it. The land value, as Grandpa predicted, had skyrocketed, turning me into a millionaire overnight. Life was good. I met a wonderful man, got married, and we built a beautiful new home. We were even expecting our first child, a future filled with love and laughter. One day, a call from Susan shattered my peace. Her voice, dripping with desperation, offered me a deal. Apparently, Brian, no longer useful, was on the table as a bargaining chip for a loan. It was the final straw. Susan, I said, my voice firm, you've shown no gratitude for anything Grandpa did for you. As far as I'm concerned, you're not my sister anymore. And besides, I'm happily married. Keep Brian and stay out of my life. I hung up, a satisfying click ending the conversation. My cat, startled by the phone call, jumped onto my lap, purring comfortingly. Later, news reached me that Susan and Brian had shown up at the old house, creating a scene. They were arrested for vandalism and, to my surprise, a past history of marriage fraud. Seeing their mugshots in the paper, I couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness for the girl Susan used to be. The greed and selfishness had consumed her, leaving nothing behind but a trail of destruction. Standing at the window, hand on my growing belly, I watched the sun set. As my husband wrapped his arms around me, I leaned my head against his shoulder, a silent vow forming in my heart. My child would learn the value of love, family, and gratitude, values that money couldn't buy. We would build a life filled with riches beyond compare, a life Susan and Brian could never understand.